So how does the classical tradition handle moral disagreement, diversity of moral practice, uh, this array of inconvenient facts? If they it, are it, the, the way we do it, and again, there's no, it seems to me no response to that question on the part of the sort of conservative textbook criti critics, is to, we're, the way we do it is to distinguish between the, the grasp, that, the understanding that, that everyone, or every f healthy, more or less adult person, but a, you know, a child from the age of reason, has the, of uh, what's basically valuable, uh, and the fact that what's basically valuable for me is also basically valuable for you, a basic good for me is, is a basic good for you. Those two, those two moves at the level of principle are, are universal or quasi-universal, but the development of, from those first principles, those absolutely first principles of practical reason, to fully moral principles, is a progression in, through th this complex, uh, as it were, issue. Namely, there is a multiplicity of how, whatever the number is, six, seven, eight, whatever, uh, basic uh, kinds of, of good, human good. And there is a multiplicity of persons in whose lives those goods can be actualized or fail to be actualized. And so th there's a problem of prioritizing and pretty much everything that we call morality or ethics I is the, the, the grappling with this problem of prioritizing. Me first or no? Uh, what, what's justice about? Uh, and amongst these basic goods, uh, is there an order? Uh, and if so, what's, what's the order? And it turns out there are a number of different, as it were, hierarchies of, of, of value, of order, but not precisely of value. Uh, hierarchy among the values. Um, and uh, morality uh, comes up with, the, when it's rightly done, comes up with the right answer. But since th there are m many basic goods and, and many persons, there are many ways in which people can slide off the, the path of f the fully reasonable response to all this complexity. And cultures, whole cultures, do slide off. And then once a culture has slid off, it tends to uh, stabilize itself and disseminate itself to new generations. And so you have the great multiplicity and relativity of, of cultures uh, across uh, geography and then across time, and then within particular communities amongst sub-communities and so forth. Could there be reasonable variation amongst moral principles? There's a lot of reasonable variation amongst uh, various implications of or aspects of moral principles, especially justice. Um, we could we could prioritize uh, safety over uh, intercommunication, for example, or vice versa. So we could decide to to have a uh, traffic speed limit of five miles an hour, uh, and thus prevent hundreds of thousands of deaths and horrible injuries and so forth, but sacrifice a, a great deal of communication amongst each other and uh, we'd have a much lower level of economic prosperity. Uh, but it wouldn't be unreasonable, nor is it unreasonable not to make that choice, but to make the choice we have made. Uh, but once a culture has settled on that kind of strategic choice, then a whole lot of things follow from that in terms of consistency. Uh, but so there's, there is a good deal of, as it were, rational or reasonable relativity. And then there are limits to that.